attendance. Oh, I'm sorry. We have to do an attendance, considering we're doing some people are on um, mm -hmm. remote. So the clerk will call the attendance. Mm -hmm. Representative Tyshurst. Present. Clerk is present. Representative Bucco. Present. Representative Marsh. Present. And the chair. I'm present. Five members present. Okay, all five members are present. And we have before us, <coughs> excuse me, a request. We just have one. And I will ask the chair of the commissioners to present it. And I see that we have someone here from the jail who can answer our questions. Correct. Um, it's a request for a $20,000 transfer from nurses salaries to agency and I'll refer to Pat he can explain to you why we went over in that line. We currently have, have a nurse out on FMLA she has been out on FMLA for some time uh, currently she is back to work part time four hours a day but she, she still cannot push a med cat uh, therefore we've been having to use an agency nurse uh, roughly twice a week at eleven $1 hundred dollars per week so we have totally exhausted our, our current line we we now in the red five five thousand six hundred eighty some odd dollars uh, we're hoping that this twenty thousand will be enough to to uh, get us get us back we where we belong and enough to take us out the, the, the year because I don't foresee this nurse coming back full duty right off. Um, I just have one, is FMLA, that's Family Medical Leave Assistance? Yes. Okay, thank you. Just for clarification. Are there any questions? Sure. Representative Bucco. Yes, I have a question. Um, are we working on the transfer for the jail? Yes. Yes. Okay, so what I see here is the one that shows in the negative 5,200 that the representative of Avalani was asking about last time. You have an updated uh, version. Yes, we have an updated version. Did you receive a copy of this? I think so. I, 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 Do I, they have this copy? It, it shows negative 5,200, and that's what he was asking about that they had already overdrawn that account even before they came to the executive committee. Correct. And I just wanted to make sure that that was, that was the amount that we were seeing in that. This is, this is the correct one on the sheet that I have before me. Okay, thank you. That's the original. This is the original, and I'm not going to write on it. <laughs> okay. Please do. I'm just holding the pen. I will not write that. Okay, so yes, this is the one. Representative Tyshurst. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just want to clarify, what is the request number here? Mine says request number 2020, but no number after that? Two amended. Um, it's two, um, two amended. It's an amended? And can you tell me which one it's amending? It's 20, it's number two. Number two. Madam Chair, I move to take okay, 20 20 2 off the table. Okay. Uh, we have a motion on the floor to take 20 2 off the table. We tabled that amendment last time. Uh, is there any? Second. Okay, we have a second. Representative Bucco. Yes. Yeah. Okay, call the roll. Uh, Yep, you can. Representative Tysharst? Yes. Clerk will vote. Yes. Representative Bucco? Yes. Representative Marsh? Yes. And the chair? Yes. Motion passes 5 to 0 to remove 2020-2 off the table. Okay. 2020-2 has been removed from the table. Madam Chair? Yes. Um, 2020-2 was then amended and became 2020-2 amended, which you considered in July, or at your last meeting, whenever you were here last. Um, and then this morning, 
A second amendment, amended version was presented to the commissioners, which is what the two of you have this morning, which I have just sent to the three members on the Zoom. So the third version they now have, which is what you have in front of you. Okay. Thank you. So well, I wanted to be sure they had a copy of it. That was yes. that and was one of do. my concerns. So now yes. they do have it. Now they do. Or they should, as long as it came through their email. Yeah. Okay, so we have removed the other one from the table. <laughs> Madam Chair, I move this is 2020 dash two uh, amended version on nine fourteen. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Okay. Seconded by uh, Representative Marsh. Discussion. Is there further discussion? Sure. Representative Bucco. That's the question, Madam Chair. Is, it, is the total transfer 20000 Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Representative Avalani. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I'm much impressed with these numbers than the ones we've got in the last two versions. So I'm glad that we have gotten our numbers together finally. I'm, I'm disappointed that we're already overdrawn on that line. However, um, moving forward, I would think that we would this would not happen again. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think the situation is one that is un it's unforeseen and unavoidable, um, and it's unfortunate. And I feel sad for the staff member who is going through the problems. So. Um, Hopefully, this will carry us through the end of the fiscal year. So, thank you. So, we will, um, we have the motion on the floor? Mm -hmm. Okay, then we'll call the roll. Representative Tyshurst. Yes. Yes, Representative Bucco. Yes. Representative Marsh. Yes. And the chair. Yes. The motion passes 5 to 0. Okay, thank you. The motion passes. Thank you very much for your patience. Any further to come? Any other transfer? I, yes. Um, yes, we can talk about that. Yes. We will take that up now. Um, we've been made aware that the delegation budget is running over. Um, and I have, I have two questions. Um, one, we need to request of you a line item transfer so that we can deal with the... the um, Delegation budget went over by, I think, three hundred dollars or something. But on one of our line items, do you have it there? Thank you. I do it in here, but yeah, yeah. I did this all myself. <laughs> okay, uh, we're over by three hundred and twenty-five dollars. Obviously, we are going to need even more of that. But I do have another question as well. Is um, in reviewing the, I have the full list of numbers that came from our finance director, and I saw in the by the dates that that our administrative assistant was not paid through our budget for the the meetings in January and February, and we were doing quite a few meetings because we were doing the budget at the time, so. Uh, I don't know when she became the, the full coordinator. I thought that was sometime in mid-March. So I feel that I feel that there, I'm not sure she's been paid. That that's my concern. And before we decide how we're exactly <coughs> going to make the changes in the budget, we need to understand that because we might need to even do further I can have to know where to take it from. I can offer some information if you. If it's that would be helpful. <laughs> Stand up so they can hear me on the Zoom. So, um, beginning on January 1st of this year, I went from being a subcontractor to a county employee, and I had a punch card, and um, it was being tracked in payroll whether they were paying me at the commissioner's meeting rate or the delegation rate, depending on what date my punches were happening. So, I've asked the, um, so it would appear to me just initially that my, all of my payroll since January 1 has been charged to the administrative salaries in the commissioner's office, and none of it has been charged to convention. So I sent an email this morning to the finance office asking them for clarification. Um, since there's been no charges to the 
delegation coordinator salary line or the related payroll expenses in that budget. So we just have to wait for a response from finance. And when I get that, I can certainly forward it to the chair. Okay. Is that helpful? Thank you. Um, and if I might, I also began working full-time um, at county on March 23rd. So all of the meetings that I did attend and record the minutes in January, February, March should be deducted from your coordinator salary line in your budget, put in the convention's budget. I just don't know what that number is. <laughs> yes, Commissioner. Part of that confusion, um, maybe the, what we had decided was that because she's going to stay your coordinator also, that what you budget for your coordinator, we were going to transfer into her salary line so that your budget for your coordinator would stay the same and then um, but not an hourly it would just be put into her annual budget her annual salary so we could okay. share and share alike so to speak but so technically but January, that, February, and up things. to March 23rd would be a different story, yes. Okay, so technically that $3,789 would be, $69, would be uh, coming out of our salary, so it should have been expense to our salary. Yes. My, okay. Well, perhaps we could wait for, I don't know if we'll be meeting again this year. I would... I so expect... We could. I expect we will. We have a budget coming for you in... December. At least two more times, right? At least two more times. So if we will be able to take care of this. So this can be straightened out. Okay, thank you. Would you like to know the procedure for a line item transfer? Well, you have to recommend it. Uh, it has to come from you. So. No, our depart the department, department head, head fills one of these out when they become okay. aware. They give it to the commissioners, and then the commissioners check for... The department head actually should check with the finance office to make sure the numbers are still correct. And okay. then it goes to the commissioners, and we approve it, and then it comes to you. Okay, so we will fill this out. As you would be the department head. And get it to you, and then it comes back to us to approve. Okay. Thank you. We will take care of that. That way the originating department head knows it's happening. Okay, thank you. We will see to that. Thank you for the clarification, but I would like to see the numbers on here so we yes. know what we are doing. Okay. With that, are there any other questions to come before the Executive Committee? Yeah. If not, I will close the Executive Committee. Madam Chair, my hand has been oh, raised. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I didn't see it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I think... I'm understanding that there's some confusion about what is being charged to which account, and um, I really need to see that on paper to understand it. But it sounds like there's an assumption that this line item is going to go over again for the delegation budget, and I challenge that assumption. I think that we need to live within our budget just like we expect any other department to live within theirs. And if we are out of money, I think we need to reassign some of the responsibilities in the way that um, we used to before we had a delegation coordinator. Yes, Representative. Uh, yes, um, uh, maybe this discussion would be better um, at the delegation yes. meeting rather than the executive committee. I, I, I agree. I think we can discuss this in our, our delegation meeting. Madam Chair, yes. I do believe that this is relevant to the work of the and scope of work of the executive committee since we are charged with approving transfers. And right now, what I think I'm hearing is that we expect this line to be overspent without the prior approval of the executive committee. And, and I would object to that. Okay, are there any other thoughts? Representative Bucco. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just 
would, I would just like to ask if these additional meetings are covered under the COVID line. I don't believe they are. No. I think one of, one of my concerns is the reason I want to see the numbers from, from the department is this was our estimate for the cost of the meetings and the amount of time from our coordinator is based on so much per meeting and and also the other time spent and the, and the, um, and I think for her time for typing up there are a lot of things that are involved in that and I would like to see what those numbers are and I can't tell from just say oh we're going to take the whole year and move it into this budget for her salary I'd like to see how that goes according to how we've expended and we don't we don't have that detail I mean, the assumption is the whole thing is going to be taken out in, you know, I need to know well, how many meetings did that cover, how many we had. We have to think, sort that out. Representative Avalani. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think that the Chair has just requested um, our 9370074 um, ex expenditures in detail from the Finance Office, if I heard correctly, Madam Chair. Yes. I would like to know what, what is in that and how much. We should do it so that we know where we can transfer from, from if we're going to request a transfer. I'd like to know where we can take it from in our budget, or if we need more, if it has to be, if there has to be between budgets or whatever. I want to know the details of that. And I can't off the top of my head just say that, and I don't think we can just looking at this, these numbers. We need the detail for those accounts. So where were we? So I make a motion to I have a motion to close the executive committee meeting, and we can go into the delegation. You? Or did I already close it? You want a motion to adjourn, Madam Chair? Yes. That's or right. do you want to recess? I do. Oh. Um, I have you set up for another a delegation. So either way, the Zoom for your executive committee will end, unfortunately. So if you recess, you won't be able to reconvene today with the members on Zoom, unless I set up a new meeting. We're, we're not going to get those meetings because Catherine is not here. The government, excuse me, the details. Why not? Is there someone she in the office here until tomorrow? Nobody else. Um, There's no one else who can do Yes. There's nobody else that can get into that system and give us detail on our line items? Uh, I can request it, but I do not believe so. Thank you, Madam Chair. You're welcome. That was my concern. Uh, Representative Tyshurst. Thank you, Madam Chair. Before we adjourn, I was uh, sent another request, 2020-07. Are we going to take that up today? I sent that to her in error, to them in error. It was a request that was on the table for the commissioners, but they didn't get to it before your meeting today. We recessed that meeting. Yeah. We're going to have to. Yeah. So. Okay. We do not have that, that yet. The commissioners have not dealt with that yet. They have recessed their meeting. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam so, Chair. There's a motion on the floor to adjourn the executive committee meeting. Is there a second it's, to that? It's yours to close, Madam Chair. Okay. I will uh, I close that meeting. Thank you. Madam Chair, would you remind those on the Zoom that this one is ending? Okay. I think Carol said she was. Didn't she? Carol, are you getting her feedback? feedback? That's the little, but I can move it. And I'll go get John then if you want to get started. Um, okay. okay. Um, let's take okay. a. Can we just do a quick roll call to make sure we have. Representative Tyshart. Present. Clerk is present. Representative Ruko. Representative Butler. Here. Representative Bodelli. Yeah. Representative Crawford. Yeah. Here. Representative Nelson. Present. Representative Como. Here. Representative Kennard. Here. Here. Representative Marsh. Present. Representative Burroughs. Representative Burroughs.
Representative Barrow, is there a Present. Present. Representative McDonald? Yes. Representative Whitcock? Here, here, here. 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 Okay, we have 14 members present. Okay. Okay. Or are they here? They won't be able to take it. No, I get it. I think we'll. I think we'll. Okay. Let's get that from microphone and that for a speaker. Okay. Let's see if we can get rid of the echo, but we're going to begin the meeting. If everybody can handle a little echo. So I'm going to call the meeting to order, and we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Representative Cuomo, would you like to lead us the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Okay. 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 So we have already done that. Uh, is there any public comment? I see no public here. But any public on Zoom who would like to comment? Seeing none, I'll close public comment. Uh, we'll do the approval of the minutes of July 27th meeting. If you received by email. See, were there any errors or omissions? Representative Butler. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I noticed in uh, the uh, minutes that it said that Representative Cuomo had made a verbal request for a right to know. I recall that it was an inquiry, but not a right, not a request. So I just would like clarification. Yes, it was a right to know request, and I believe I, I add, added that to the commissioner's meeting also. Thank you for that clarification. And for the record, I still have not received it. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other errors, omissions, questions? Excellent. Hearing none, I entertain a motion to approve the minutes. So moved, Madam Chair. Second. It's been moved by Representative Avalani and seconded by Representative Cuomo. Okay. Um, so all those, those so we'll do the roll call. Sorry, forget must roll call. Representative Tyshart? Yes. Yes. Representative Fuko? Yes. Representative Butler? Yes. Representative Cordelli? Yes. Representative Crawford? Yes. Representative Nelson? Nelson. Representative Como? Yes. Representative Kennard? Yes. Representative Marsh? Yes. Yes. Representative Barros. Yes. Representative McDonald. Yes. Representative Whitcock. Yes. 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 Chair. Yes. Thank you. Representative Cordelli. Yes. Yes. A minute. Thank you. July 27th. Yes. Passes 14 times. Okay. Madam Chair, if I could have a signature from the clerk. Thank you. Certainly. Okay, the next item on the agenda is an update on the CFO hiring. Let us know where this stands. We have, um, we did the interviews, we narrowed it down, we have had a send out an offer letter. Um, I believe we're going to get the signed offer letter uh, on Wednesday, and we will do the contract at that time. Good. Did everybody hear that? Okay. Are there any questions? Madam Chair? Yes, Representative Butler. Thank you. Um, if I could just ask for clarification on um, how you see this position fitting in. And, um, I didn't see the description of the position. Um, we told the person that we gave the offer letter to that in shot, but we expected them to do was to be 100% backup for the finance director that's there now, plus manager of the office. Backup? So uh, that if, I, if I could, Madam Chair? If she were to get sick or be on vacation or not be here, that you could sit in her seat and continue with it. Madam 
Chair? Yes, Representative follow, Butler. Follow up, thank you. Um, so back up to the finance director, but manager of the office. Who please, please, please is, is the there a, You can hear me. We're not able to understand what's what being said. You might be too far away from the microphone. Yeah. Can you hear me now, Representative Tysers? I disagree with that. I disagree with that. Ed. <laughs> Agreed. Procedure. Okay. Um, I was asking about the CFO position. Can people hear me? No. Um, I am asking about the CFO position and uh, the. The host would like you to unmute your microphone. You can press star six to unmute. I'll try it again. Hopefully, it's... you are unmuted. Okay. Hello. Can you hear us? Those on the Zoom, can you hear us? Oh. <laughs> Two of them to dial in so that we can have at least a quorum while we're conducting this meeting. Um, I would suggest um, somebody call somebody and get them on at least on the phone on the table here because we can't we can't continue this way. You just need two. We need two for a quorum. Well, we can tell them all to do it, and, and we know we need two. But, who, but I don't know how many whose phone how many phones we're going to need to call in. They just and you can't hear us, right? No. Nope. Yeah. I'm sitting down and shutting up. Can't get that. Uh. It all started with your question. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> do you want me to call Anita and ask her? TV? I think they can hear, right? Saw Ed. Can you hear now. us now? Yeah. It's got to be somebody's connection. Because we were fine until a few of them passed out of popping up and then it went to crap. Welcome to Zoom. Enter your meeting ID followed by pound. Your participant ID followed by pound. Please enter the meeting password followed by pound. You are in the meeting now. There are 12 participants in the meeting. This meeting is being recorded. You are muted. You can mute or unmute yourself by pressing star 6. You have been put on hold by the host. You cannot listen or talk until the host releases the hold. You are muted. You can mute or unmute yourself by pressing star six. You, you are unmuted. I can I can hear you talking too. The rest of the sound of silence. Can anyone hear me? <laughs> can you hear us? <laughs> um, we could not, yes, I could. We could hear now you. Can, now we can. We could not for a while. Now we can hear you. you oh, hear you. thank God. <laughs> yes. And Representative and there's no Butler. Echo now. And there's no echo now. Good. All right. <laughs> Representative Butler is going to repeat his question. Um, I was I was asking about the CFO position, which is apparent, which is being all has been offered to one of the uh, interviewees. And um, can you hear me? Okay, great. Um, and. Uh, the commissioner said that uh, this new person would back up the finance director and manage the office. And I was just wondering, uh, in terms of the responsibilities for the office, who is uh, the leader of the finance office? The CFO. The CFO will be the leader. Thank you. Representative Quadelli. Thank you. 
Um, my question is related to backing up the finance manager. I, I think it's um, inappropriate to ask the finance manager to be going in and entering transactions for um, revenue and uh, expenditures uh, during a vacation of the finance manager or anything like that. We have a bookkeeper. What is the job description of the bookkeeper and what does the bookkeeper actually do? They should be the person doing that in the absence of the finance manager, in my opinion. Do we have job descriptions for for the others? And there's a definite hierarchy of administrative responsibility. Yes. It's clearly been defined. We have previously heard that the bookkeeper is not trusted with doing reconciliations. We heard that the finance manager indicate that they would have to stand next to the bookkeeper uh, to make sure that reconcil reconciliations were be being done properly um, if they were to be done by the bookkeeper. I think that that uh, is a significant problem. Um, I think that the bookkeeper um, that is employed by the Carroll by Carroll County should be able to do uh, the basic functions within the office. Um, and if, if I could add to that, um, two years ago we approved um, and budgeted for hiring of an administrative off, off, excuse me, administrative assistant. Uh, that person should also be able to handle uh, transactions into the system to offload some of the work for other staff members. That, to my knowledge, has never been done. The person has never been trained. I think that, that it is an administration problem in the office that needs to be corrected ASAP. Excuse me. I, I think that what, and this is my personal opinion, but uh, having run an administrative office, I think what we really need is a clear, and I think our HR person, which we have hired to address some of these issues, we need a clear set of job descriptions according to the needs and the hierarchy. And I'm not sure if those have been done or if this is one of the first things we are going to ask of our new our new administrator for the office because um, I think what you're referring to is not to set the job description around the people but the, what the needs of the county are mm -hmm. should determine the job descriptions and then the people should be fit into those job descriptions according to skill levels. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably a different issue than this, but I think those are the needs of the county. Representative Avalani? Thank you, Madam Chair. I think that we also need to be um, cognizant of the fact that the delegation does not employ uh, any members. Um, I think that our job is, is right now is we're expressing our opinions to the commissioners and it would be up to the commissioners to define employee roles and relationships in order for um, in, in their management. Uh, I think we're treading a little lightly um, on possible uh, non-public issues by defining certain employees and their job descriptions. Okay. I see Representative Tice Hurst. Thank you, Madam Chair. I was going to make a similar point to that made by Representative Avalani, and I would just suggest that, um, that the proper place for this discussion would be at the commissioner's meetings, and we're all welcome to go to those meetings. Thank you. Representative Fuko. Thank you, Madam Chair. So I just have a question for the commission. Is this, does the person that you're sending the offer letter to, do they have experience with a, uh, running a, an office this size, a $30 million business with multiple departments? Yes, sir. I didn't get to that answer. Yes, sir. She said yes. This person does. Have the sufficient time. Okay, thank you. Are there any further questions? 
Comments? Okay. Thank you. Um, financial audit update. Uh, I understand that we received a letter from the from the auditor. A note that um, they have started and they uh, have found and the information that they requested has been available and appears to be in good order and they are going to be back again on the 24th and the 25th. Um, is that your understanding as well? Representative Avalon? Thank you, Madam Chair. What um, remaining requested information and as it becomes available and completed? Um, I'm just wondering what what information was requested and why, and what is waiting to be completed? I do not have the specific details. The procedure they usually follow is they'll give a list of things that they would like to have in front of them. Kathy gives it to them. They work on that. Then if they have any other questions, they ask her for some more. And she gives them that. It depends on, you know, what they find when they're doing their work. Thank you. Representative Butler? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, are you comfortable that uh, the finance director can provide all the information necessary to the auditors uh, that they require by their on-site uh, visit? Yes, sir. Um, thank you. I was just uh, wondering if the commissioners are getting regular updates from the uh, auditor or from the finance manager about progress um, and uh, information that has or has not been provided, in addition to or um, any email correspondence uh, such as this um, summary level. No, the summary level is I see in the letter they also said that they are going to give us another update on September 29th. So they are planning to keep us surprised of progress. Are there any other questions? Regarding the right. okay. Okay. Representative Cuomo. How are we going to address the statutory requirements that the delegation has about this audit? Now, I don't, is it going to be done in November? The end of November, after the election? I mean, how are we going to do this? This should have been done so long ago, so this delegation can do their responsibility. I don't know how we're getting away with this. That's more of a comment, but I don't know how we're doing this. I said the same thing last time. Yes. I agree with your concerns, but I think we're working very hard to try to, to correct the situation. We are making progress with that. Representative Cornelli. Just to follow on uh, to Representative Moe's uh, uh, comment, um, I would hope that the audit would be completed so that we have audited numbers uh, for the commissioners uh, to uh, do um, their budget for next year. Representative Cuomo. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm also really, I'm not very comfortable with this report. If, if Melanson knows that there's open items, why couldn't they tell us what those, what those items are? At least we would, we would understand what's been completed, what's not been completed. This is still very fluid and ethereal to me. It's the best word I could come up with. Did you have a comment, uh, Mr. Costello? Uh, Madam Chair, thank you very much. Um, unfortunately, I have not been kept abreast of what's happening. I, I have not been kept abreast of what's happening um, with finance um, or the audit. I have, I have had some conversations with uh, Cheryl Burke, and um, she has assured me they will complete the audit, given the fact that they get all the information that they've requested. Again, I don't know what that information is, um, so I really have nothing to respond to because I have not been given any information by the finance department. 
hope that's an issue that will be addressed when we get down new people and because that's really important that's your responsibility the overall I, if I may manage the chair, I pointed that out to the commissioners on a number of occasions, but I have yet to um, receive a response. Uh, we can help. But understanding how audits work, though, we, you do get a list at the beginning, and then you get you get additional Absolutely. lists and things that they go further, and, and as they get done, and then you get a final list to tie it up. So it's right. not uncommon to get to have um, updated requirements, but as they have come up with questions, as they look at things, they come up with further questions, so you get another list. So I understand that part of it. Um, and Chair, it, it would be nice if the finance office would share that list with the treasurer, so that we know what they're looking for, um, which I believe could be shared with the delegation if they need it, and then we can have a better understanding of where we are with this audit. But thus far, that has not happened. Perhaps we could request that, the, that we receive a copy of it, or at least that the treasurer receives a copy. Is that something that the commissioners could request from the finance office? Copy of what? The list. Just the, 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 that our auditor calls it his wish list. And we always, you know, for the housing coalition, that I happen to be treasurer of and I'm just finishing an audit. And I just got the final last few things that they want because they don't always give you everything front. They do it in stages. I believe what we're looking for is a complete list of what the auditor was asking for and what they're still looking for. Yes. I mean, that's a simple process thing. Uh, can the commissioners, would you be willing to ask for that? To get some right. Charges? That was, we had that in the meeting. We had that. So, we don't know what we do original list, I believe I shared it with the delegation. The original um, the wish list? List that they sent. Yes. You know, oh, may I? Yes. Yes, we received that list, but that list has got to be at least two months old and it's got it cannot be the updated. No, I believe it's an updated as I said, as it progresses it, it does go. But I think that the treasurer should have access to the progress. I believe. Yeah, may yes. I ask, um, are the commissioners, the commissioners have this current updated list? I'm not sure how updated it is. That's okay. the current. Um, so according, if I may follow up, according to this letter, um, much information has been requested, much of the information has been requested, has been received, and appears to be in good order. So. I don't know what they've received, I don't know what they requested, and it also goes on to say it's our understanding that the county staff will provide the remaining requested information as it becomes available slash is completed. Again, I'd like to see what that list is, and I suspect that's what the delegation is looking for. Thank you. I would um, hope that the commissioners would uh, exercise um, their uh, due diligence in uh, trying to make sure that any remaining uh, information is available to the auditors by their next uh, appointment on September 24th. Okay, are there any other questions or comments? Oh, Representative Paul. I shouldn't use this word, but I don't know how this can be legal. We can't complete what we're supposed to statutorily do, is which is to review. And the treasurer, a separate power that's elected, has told us for four to six months at least that he cannot do his statutory duty. I don't know how this can be legal. I, I do not understand. And since I'm on the delegation, I don't I can't remove myself from it, so I guess I want in the record that I protest that this is even happening. So I protest. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, hopefully we can see this again with our new person coming on, that this can move quickly. But I think we don't, shouldn't have to wait for another person to allow our, one of our, our offices of our county to be able to function as, as he has been elected to do. So I hope that 
that's something that the commissioners will work with. Are there any other further comments? Um, okay. The, um, the next thing on the agenda is the annex, the future use. And uh, I think we haven't, we haven't had a second meeting uh, to that. Is, is anything else going on with that? I'm waiting to hear from the architects. And once we get the architects, um, then we'll have a second meeting. Okay. Um, well, one of the reasons that I think it is one of the issues that we have. Oops. That's interesting. <laughs> one of the one of the issues that we have been, that we looked at was the possibility of putting a daycare center in, um, which and one of the reasons we did get that from the architect was roaring, but of course no numbers, and I'm not advocating that that's the decision that will be made. But I did hear recently on the news that there are community development block grants that have been specifically set aside to increase the availability of childcare. And while that window is open, that is one of the things that we need to look at. And I also would be very interested in, and uh, I'm sorry we haven't continued to meet and look at the other potential uses, because uh, we, when we had the presentation, we were shown that the that a lot of our our archives, paperwork, are, are crammed into closets and rooms and packed in, um, and that there's a lot of storage going on in there, not necessarily appropriate for for a building that's going to be used for offices or other uses or charter school or whatever. That. One thing is we're looking at the budget and the upcoming budget, if we had a plan that we could spread out how that building is redone so that we could spread it maybe across a couple of years and, and um, that it's really important. And one of the issues might be that was suggested to me by our grounds person is the maintenance people that they could really benefit from having maybe a quantum hut type shed or something and then they could move that the, the bus store, the tractors, and all the equipment would have appropriate storage. We could put in shelves where there could be appropriate dry storage for our paper stuff, where it, there would be access to it if needed, and where we could have them put in a little office workshop. But I mean, that just off the, when we were just chatting, but I would love to see us continue to meet so we can look at that and come up with like a master plan, because it's space that is being wasted and right now, and you desperately need the administrative offices. So you know, I would hope that we could, could meet and keep that moving. Just as soon as we get some word from the architect, I've heard nothing from him. Um, so he's still working on it. We are working on a storage plan. Um, as a matter of fact, there are papers over there that need to be scanned and shredded. Um, that was something that was in a budget a few years ago and, and didn't go very far, but I think you'll see that back in this year's budget. Uh, yes, I'm just wondering if this architect who is coming up with some numbers or some plan or, or something, um, was that uh, uh, firm hired as the result of a bid? Um, or are they doing this work um, for free, yes. and they have no expectations that they will be hired for any other uh, further work on this project. I can't speak for their expectations, but they are doing it gratis. They have been involved over there on two other separate occasions when we were looking at what to do with it. So they have background information, and they have collected past money, not from the county, but from other entities. So. Uh, I'm just concerned that um, uh, this might be an, another uh, example of the uh, good old boys network um, and giving uh, this architectural firm a leg up on anyone else who would like to bid on uh, future work. And that's my concern. Representative Butler. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, mm -hmm. I, a question of the Commissioner. Is there a time frame that you'll, you have for expectation for 
um, the work product that you're looking for from the architect? He said the end of September. Thank you. Madam Chair, um, Representative Burroughs has her hand up on the Zoom. Representative Burroughs? Yeah, thank you. Um, just if, if the idea of the daycare is pursued, one question that I think it might be important to answer is whether that location would attract enough people just because it, it, it's far enough away from where the majority of the population is, I would, I would want to know that there would be the demand to go to uh, Ossipi for that. I think that that has to be looked at. But I think that part of that would be part of the thought when we talked about it was to serve perhaps the employees here. I think any anything that goes in there, whether it be a, a charter school, a daycare center, or whatever, is going to have to pay its own way. And there certainly would need to be a needs assessment done. But it, considering that we do have a number of employees here, a large number of employees, that I expect the base of it, the majority, would come from, from the local employees. But again, that has not been done. That's what I'm saying, where that time is going. And I, I think that some of these you know, informal things could be happening, so we would have a better idea. But I know everybody's been very busy, and this whole corona thing has thrown us all off in our timing and, and the issues that we're dealing with. But, and I don't think it would be a large daycare if it were used for that. Um, okay, there's is there any other discussion about the annex or questions? If not, we'll move on to the question. Oh, sorry. Who was that? Was that available? I just have a, yes. Yes, perfect. Just a comment. Thinking of the nursing home, for example, remember they have free shifts. So any use of it would be a, potentially a third of the employees. All right, thank you. There's no further discussion. We'll move on to the second quarter expense and revenue review. several pieces of information um, and um, one was related to uh, 2020 transfers uh, and I think that uh, that uh, document raised questions in my mind that need to be handled in a non-public session under uh, 91a colon 3 Roman 2 uh, e related to litigation. Okay. Uh, we did not receive that. Twenty twenty transfers. It was that was a ninety one A, wasn't it? Was that ninety one A? People are gonna have to speak up. There's no yes. way people can hear. Did, every, did all delegation members receive a document uh, related to 2020 transfers? There was a, a document, um, I believe it was the title 2020 uh, transfers. This is a this is a long sheet of all of the transfers that have been approved by the delegation. There was an it, it's just a recording of the actions of the delegation, and it's in an Excel spreadsheet, and it was sent out for everyone. Well, I yeah. never got a copy of it. I don't think I don't remember seeing that. Yeah. Yeah, it goes through the the approval of the annex transfer. I got mine. Yeah. Can you? 
Okay. Can we establish yeah. if everyone on Zoom has received it? Awesome. The commissioner. Yeah, Inquirer. Uh, did you all receive a copy of the 2020 all the transfers and compilation of them? May I inquire, Madam Chair? Yes, Representative Tysers. Thank you, Madam Chair. Are you referring to the email we got with a document that had uh, uh, it was a spreadsheet with the expenditures on one sheet, um, yeah. the revenues on another sheet, and then the transfers on the third? Yes. Yeah. 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 Thank you. I did yeah. receive that. Yeah. Melissa, do you have copies of those that you can look at? Them? Oh. Question, Madam Chair? <laughs> Yes, Representative Knirk? Yes, um, I'm not sure I saw that. What was the date that that was sent so I can look for it? September 1st, 2020, 5.42 p.m. Okay, thank you. 5.42, thank you. Yep. Yes, Representative Butler. Thank you. Is Representative Cordelli saying that we need to go into non-public session in order to discuss that uh, document, and if so, uh, is that something that will happen at the end of the meeting? Um, I'm, I'm not clear. Representative Adelina. I would make um, the request that we hold it to the end of the meeting, because I know that we have several um, Mental public entities yeah. that, are re that are recording this meeting. Um, we should probably do our non-public at the end, maybe get all our other business um, done before we enter into non-public manager. That's respectfully requested. I think that makes sense. So we'll wait and go into uh, non-public session at the end of the meeting, and perhaps it's the way that some of us who do not can receive a copy of that. Do you mind if I take yours? So no. we have a principal and I can make copies? Sure. Thank you. Sure. Well, Melissa, so would you give the commissioners a copy of the complete email that you sent them? Sure. Oh, my <laughs> Okay, thank you. So we will go on with the hope everything stays together while this is on. Yes. <laughs> Don't touch anything. <laughs> we won't touch anything. Okay. Uh, so let's let's start with the revenues. Are there any with the first sheet? Are there any questions? Yes. Uh, Madam Chair, thank you. Madam Treasurer. For those who can't see who's talking. <laughs> um, as I look at these sheets, I received these on last Wednesday, just prior to the commissioner's meeting, um, and I've gone through them. The only question I'm, well, I've got a number of questions, but one of the questions I'm concerned about on revenues, the total revenue says something about 8 point, I'll call it 8.6 million rounding out here. It's actually 8.571935.78, but round it out to 8.6. One of the things that's showing up in the revenue stream is a pro share of $2,239,243. If you deduct that out of the revenues, because that's something that obviously wasn't known at the time before it came in, our revenues are not at 24%, they're at 18%. And so for the first six months, I'm a little concerned that our revenues are only 18%, and on the expense side, we're showing 45% expenses. I'm wondering how this is affecting our cash flow. The best that I can tell is that we've drawn 5.5 million on our TAN note, and there's 2.4 million that has not been utilized yet out of the um, surplus, which would give us total revenues available of about 14.2 million to cover our expenses of about 15.8 million if you look at the expense page. So once again, I'm not sure where we are on our cash flow. Representative Avalani. I echo uh, the treasurer's um, concerns regarding the revenue. Uh, I know that we've also appropriated our supplemental budget, uh, $1.1 million in um, grant funds. And I, as of right now, I can't see where 
those were um, moved to, because I'm pretty sure we gave specific numbers to. I see 489 on page three of the revenue COVID-19 grant funds, and I also know that we put some in the nursing home under miscellaneous. Miscellaneous is 482. The COVID grant funds is 489, and I know we appropriated over a million dollars. We took in over a million dollars, so I just want to make sure that we're um, updated as to where that money is. I mean, granted, this is June 30th. This is now September. Um, I would be also echoing the, the concerns of cash flow perspective of having $8 million come in and having approximately $15 million going out. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Representative Butler. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I do want to point out that even though we got the $2.2 in pro share, we did budget $1.7. So it's not the entire amount that should be withdrawn in the plan for calculating um, the uh, worry or threat uh, relative to revenue. Thank you, Madam Chair. If I can respond to Representative Butler, um, yes, I agree that there was money appropriated or budgeted for that. All I'm saying is that that was money that we anticipated coming in, and it did, and it was higher than we expected. However, if you take that piece out of the equation, because you did not know when you were going to get that, per se, we're really only at 18% of real revenues even though that pro-share money is now in. And you can make a case for counting that pro-share money. I'm not going to dispute that, but I'm just looking at the raw numbers, if I may. And so what concerns me, like I said, even, even with that pro-share money, we're, we're supposedly at 24% for six months. That's less than half of what we should be for our total revenues. And there in lies my concern to cover our cash flow. As I've said, we've, we've taken $5.5 million on our TAN note, uh, we have not utilized the 2.4 million, uh, which shows in the budget, by the way, um, of the surplus funds. So if we add that back in, um, we've got total revenue of 14.2 million against uh, expenses of 15.8 million. So we've got a, a little difference, and I'd like to have a better handle on what our cash flow issues are and how we're supporting it. Are we supporting it with our TAN note, which is understandable, or are we going to support it other ways? point is, we need to get this information in a timely fashion, and we need to understand it. Thank you. Representative Avalani? No, 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 I okay. have to look something up. Sorry. Okay. Representative Marsh. Okay, Representative Marsh. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank I you, uh, want to concur with the concern about cash flow. I would point out especially some of our largest lines, and particularly the Medicaid and the board line. Uh, which is uh, right at the top of the revenue page. Uh, there we receive 35% of the budgeted amount, and we would anticipate that. Uh, unlike revenue from taxes, this isn't something that we just receive in a lump sum at a particular time of the year. This is something we ought to be getting uh, throughout the year. So having that not be close to 50% is highly worrisome, and it's at 35% right now. So I, I think it, it's highly likely that there, there's going to be a shortfall in that line. Uh, towards the end of the year, and, and we need much more up-to-date information. Uh, really, we should be seeing uh, cash numbers within a week or two of expenditure so we can keep an eye on this, and we're not seeing that. Representative Woodcock. Thank you, Madam Chair. Is it possible we could direct that to Howie? At, at some point, we receive communication from him saying that the number of residences are less than the COVID. Would that impact the Medicare? Can you on that, uh, yes. Bill or Howard? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Mr. Chandler, could you enlighten us? Yep, that's, that is the direct connection. We are down by over $200,000, but we do have an additional miscellaneous, an extra 482000 which is largely due to help us compensate for unrecognized revenues because we have presently, as of today, 13 empty bids. I'm predicting that by the end of the year, between the, the COVID money that we received for for a revenue deficit, that we will be more. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. Representative Tysers. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I certainly agree that we need to have current information, up-to-date information, and also that we need to watch our cash flow carefully. But I'd like to point out um, that generally um, we're in this, I think we're in this situation every year where our revenues are um, lagging way behind just because we don't actually get the income from taxes until almost the end of the year. So um, that, that's a really big factor that we need to include when we evaluate our situation. Representative Quadelli, did you have a question? Uh, yes. Um, uh, first, um, Farm income, one percent. Uh, secondly, um, jail borders. Um, we've always talked about county versus non-county, um, and uh, we received um, a document border revenue. As of 9-2, Rockingham, Stratford, and um, it looks like state prisoners maybe, but um, the numbers don't seem to add up to me. Um, maybe I'm mistaken, but I, I'm not sure if the numbers on this add up to the numbers on the uh, revenue um, spreadsheet. And I was wondering if we could receive a similar breakdown of expenditures for those borders. Representative Alamani. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I know that we've gone through this uh, at the nursing home before, but um, when we bill, um, it says uh, on the blue figures highlighted in blue have been billed pending payment. So. What we're to expect is up until June, we receive all of the monies for the first six months. Is, would that be a correct assumption? Yes. Follow up, Madam Chair? Yes. It looks like there's 32000 outstanding as from June on. Um, and what we have here is 102000 So. If we've taken in 165,000, we haven't filled out 32,000. It looks like it's roughly $30,000 not accounted for yet from these numbers. Right. From these numbers. I think that was Representative Cordelli's question. Yes, thank you. If I might, I think those are two different dates. One is a six month date, and one is a nine month date. Right, I think. Uh, yes, but we're looking at right, the June 30 30. at this point because we don't have, I mean, we're almost to the. Uh -huh. But the other one is, is the right. through September, through mm -hmm. to September. Yes. They're almost to the end of September. We're just doing the first two months, first two quarters. Representative Adelani. Thank you. I did. I did up until June. Um, I removed the in blue because it wasn't billed yet from June on, so I'm guessing um, the, uh, it either hasn't been posted or hasn't been received. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm just going to make a suggestion for future because we've had so many te technical difficulties today. But in the documents that I received that I'm looking at, which I believe are the correct documents, there's nothing highlighted in blue. So it's really hard to figure to follow along. So I'd just like to suggest that next time we go over figures that um, you allow someone to share their screen so we can all see the same thing at the same time. Thank you. 
hopefully, we can't get straight what we're trying to do. <laughs> but we'll add one more thing. But it, it does make sense because it's difficult when we're not here and we don't all know what the other people are looking at. So it makes it very awkward. So I thank everybody for their patience. Are there any other questions on the revenue? Thank you. I say we're with just a couple of weeks. Oh, Representative Avalon. Where is the rest of the COVID grant money? That's, that's my follow-up to my original. Uh, how, how, I see the money where Howie is, and I see the money that we've gotten, but we appropriated uh, over a million dollars in our last supplemental um, budget. So I'm wondering if it came in after June 30th, or if this, we could get an update specifically to that money because we did appropriate that money. We can give you the exact dates that that came through. One was for 10 weeks, one was for 15 weeks. But no, the follow up. Yeah, there. certainly. Um, the, when we passed our um, funding for the supplemental budget, I know we had one point, we took in $1.1 million. I just, it's not on the sheet where it is, where it all is. We have less than nine, well, roughly 900,000 and change listed here. But I know we appropriated 1.1 million. That was for the full, the rest of the year, correct? That was up until whenever you guys approved the mm -hmm. supplemental budget. But I think that was projected for the end of the year. Yeah. I don't know. I wasn't here at that meeting. I don't know. We have not participated in that, so I don't know. I do know that the funding is continuing. Um, the COVID um, go for funding mm -hmm. application just went in last week, I think, I believe. Okay. Um, so, you know, there is more money that is available or is coming um, that it has to be spent and then we uh, apply for it and then we get reimbursed. Yes. The number one million was, was just a, a, a good gap that was not based on accurate facts. That was part of the problem. I wanted it based to that date on actual facts. And I gather when you came to the meeting that you wanted it for the whole year, for the rest of the year. So that's what that projection was. But I, I, I wasn't at that meeting. So. Is that something that Mr. Chairman can answer? Okay. Representative Butler. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I was uh, wondering uh, the numbers that Representative Avalani was referring to. Um, I only see 489,000 in the COVID grant funds. Um, where else are you seeing that in revenue? Uh, with the chairwoman's yes. um, Page four. Under miscellaneous income for the nursing home, is the other four hundred eighty-two thousand. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. Representative Cordelli, did you have another question? I uh, just wondered if there's any follow-up to my um, concern about the farm income. If the commissioner's added any information about uh, farm income. I believe you're looking on the first half of the year. Correct. Um, the hay the income doesn't come until after that. Right. They are still doing hay now. We're still selling and delivering hay. It's been an excellent year. We have had no rain. So we got a lot done. But what's happening is now the production is down because the water is down in the ground. So um, I can't tell you. But I do know that. June, July is, is really very good, uh, but um, as the ground is dried out, because we are, I, they haven't declared it yet, but I'm pretty sure they will declare that we're in a, a drought situation. So the income is, is seasonal. So that's Correct. That's not showing Excuse me, Madam Chair. Yes? Excuse me, please par pardon me for interrupting, but most of us are unable to hear the conversation that's going on. Could we have a quick summary of what Representative Cordelli inquired and maybe a quick catch up to the response? Pardon me for interrupting. Certainly, thank you. The question was why there was no income showing on the farm line. 
And it's, the answer is because it's seasonal, and this, the, what we are reviewing only goes to the 30th of June, and that income comes in late summer and in the fall. So, I believe that's all you missed, I hope. Are there any other questions on the revenue? Okay, seeing none, we will move to the expenses. Representative Cordelli. Uh, under 4100 for commissioners, the administrative salaries. Um, we have heard um, a number of months ago about um, a problem with the administrative salaries line um, and a potential shortfall. Then I believe the commissioners um, were told that there is no longer a problem. However, looking at the numbers, the first quarter, the expenditures in the administrative salaries line was 36% for the first quarter. Now it is at 68%. Um, I am concerned about that. Um, I believe I mentioned it before, but uh, I had requested a uh, uh, through a 91A request, a breakdown uh, detail of the 4100 account um, expenditures, and this it goes through May. And I see uh, dated May 31st, um, a move of almost $120,000 out of administrative salaries to the settlements line. But we had budgeted money in the settlements line and there was a subsequent um, move of uh, uh, a number, excuse me, a transfer from um, mainly uh, nursing home funds to the settlements line uh, to compensate for another settlement. So I'm wondering what is going on with the administrative salaries account. And I would um, ask that uh, the auditors look into this as part of their um, audit function. And I would gladly, at some point, get an explanation of why there was money moved from administrative uh, salaries to the uh, settlement line. That is an excellent question, and that is one that we are pursuing currently to find out because it seems like the same money was spent and was also moved. And that was something that just yes, came up in this last printout that we had, the one that you have. And, uh, the, money, the money did come from the nursing home. That was, I believe, 140,000 was transferred, and that was for a legal issue from the nursing home to the settlement. As you remember, the delegation had requested a settlement line that had never been a settlement line, and I think that may be the confusion with having money in two places. You know, having it in the salaries and in the administration salaries, and also transferring it to the settlement line where there was money budgeted in the settlement line. So that is a question I'm pursuing. Uh, I do not think there should have been any confusion because when we were doing the budget, we specifically uh, were aware of one settlement and made that adjustment in the budget, I believe, taking that from the administrative salaries in the budget and putting that in the settlement line. So uh, there should have been no confusion. And I, I would like an explanation. I, 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 I agree. That's why I am investigating it. Uh, Commissioner McCarthy and I were both. Thank you. Found that and. Uh, so following that up, and as soon as we can get that 
I have to go back to the actual delegation meetings to see um, what the wording was and how it, hopefully it was just a misunderstanding. Okay. Representative Coleman. Thank you, Madam Chair. I believe that was three weeks ago at a commissioner's meeting, and even Commissioner Babson asked the same question. So three weeks has expired, and we have no answer to what happened with that? I guess that's more of a statement. I don't My know three hours about. a week um, get eaten up very quickly, so I, you know, I'm still working on it in my extra time. Representative Cordelli. Thank you. I, I would hope that something like this wouldn't fall upon uh, the chair of the Board of Commissioners to research, and that we have a finance department, a finance office, that should be doing that work. Unfortunately, she is working on the budget as much as exclusively as possible, and uh, that's why I took this. Hopefully with another person in here, we'll be able to get some to the answers to the things quicker. Representative Avalon. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, would the chairman of the commissioners like to answer the question of who transferred that money? That is part of my ongoing investigation. Call Madam Avalon. Chair. Um, you know that we've heard many times that there's only one person that has access to uh, that level of administration. Would it be safe to say that somebody made that transfer? That is what's coming out on the printouts, yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. Representative Cadell. Thank you. Can you repeat that, Madam Chair? Madam Chair, hit the interrupt, but can you repeat that? We may not have the microphone. We can't hear the answer. I said that is what the printouts are showing. Who, who, to answer, if I may, Madam Chair? Sure. To, thank you. To answer Representative Avalon's question, who actually made the transfer? That is what I am investigating. That is what Commissioner McCarthy and I and Commissioner Babson questioned as um, Representative Como said um, three weeks ago when we were given this printout. They, they are looking into who did the, the change. Obviously it came from the finance office. So uh, they are looking at the why and how. So Representative Cordell. Thank you. And, um, Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's my impression that per state law, a transfer like that would have had to have been approved by the commissioners and the uh, executive board of the delegation. See, the problem I, I'm finding, and, and I don't know because I haven't finished, and that's why I don't like to, to make a statement until I'm 100% sure. The complication came because we had instituted a settlement line this year. So whether, when we did the budget, it was my impression that there was money put in the settlement line. It was my impression there was an amount put in the salary line. They were not related. Apparently, though, that was not the impression of the finance director. The finance director thought that the settlement line was going to be funded from the salary line. And I'm trying to get through that and find out what actually occurred at the delegation meeting and the commissioner's meeting to find out the truth. Representative Avalon. I think we need to tread very carefully um, for identifying employees and trying to present I think it, if further discussion is warranted, I think if we move to the um, 90 um, non yeah. uh, Yes, Representative Cordell. My only comment follow up would be that um, there was, I believe, $140,000 in the budget. Um, and that's why I've always wanted not just a revised budget number in here, but 
the, the approved budget number in here. I believe it was $140,000. And we know that there was money transferred uh, for uh, a second settlement to that settlement line. So if there was um, money also transferred from administrative salaries, we should be seeing a significant um, remaining balance in that settlement line, but we are not. So there, I think there are many questions that uh, hopefully will be answered by the commissioner's investigation. Hopefully we'll know the next. Representative Marsh. Marsh? Yes, Representative Marsh. Uh, yes, Madam Chairman. It, it appears to me that there's only a certain number of individuals who may have been able to make this transfer and we're discussing about it. And it appears to me that there's a significant question as to whether this transfer uh, was in fact uh, authorized uh, properly. And may I suggest that the appropriate avenue for us to investigate whether a, a uh, significant transfer was made uh, uh, without authorization would be to initiate a forensic audit of this transfer. And it should not be assigned to the chair, to the uh, cabinet commissioners. Representative Burroughs, would you put your hand up? Sorry, Flash. Representative Tyser. Thank you, Madam Chair. So, I uh, recall in past years when we discussed. Uh, having a forensic audit, um, that it can be in a very expensive endeavor. And I do believe that we should attempt to get some clarity on this in-house before we consider uh, that kind of expenditure. Thank you. Representative Cordelli? I would just point out that um, forensic audits can now be uh, authorized and appropriated by the delegation. Are there any further questions? Representative Avalani. Thank you, Madam Chair. And, and I, I think in, in order for us to help the commissioners with their um, um, backlog into the budgeting and budget process, I think that a committee investigation by this delegation would be warranted to find out why this transfer happened without the expense of a forensic audit at this time. I think I would, I would agree to take a first look and to try to do that because it would be extremely expensive if we went through the whole thing. Yes, Representative Fidelli. Um, is the chair indicating that um, she would like to form that committee of investigation? I think I think we could do that, uh, and we can set up a committee and, and to just have it perhaps to help. Uh, I, I Madam Chair, can we ask this? Yes. Can we ask that the committee of recommendation make a recommendation to the full delegation and sometimes certain as to whether a forensic audit on the subject is warranted? I think that might be a uh, that might be a, per, a good first step. Representative Cadell. Would the uh, chair like a motion uh, in relation to establishing that committee of investigation? I think that might be a, a good first step. I would like, hate to go to the expense of a forensic audit if, if this is such a fine, a finite question we're asking about a specific area that uh, to go to a full forensic audit I think would be too expensive that we should at first take a look. Representative Avalani. Madam Chair, I, I move that we create an investigative committee. Second. Okay. The motion I second that motion. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded by want to give it to several people. Um, Representative Marsh, I seconded the motion. <coughs> Is there any further discussion? <coughs> Representative Butler. Madam Chair, I uh, would wonder what kind of uh, membership there would be on this uh, committee. Uh, are we talking two, three, four people? Um, and. Uh, if we could define that um, and then ask for the person who wants to do that to be a chair, then we could 
have some definition to the motion. Okay. Madam Chair, can I just yes. read the RSA that specifies this? It's right. I think I've read that before, but definitely. It's RSA 24, column 17. It's under investigations. The county convention, by a vote of the majority of all its members, may appoint a committee of its own members not to exceed five and not over three to be either of the two major political parties to investigate conditions pertaining to the conduct of county affairs by any county officer or any person appointed or employed by such officer, which committee shall have power to summon witnesses, examine them under oath, secure a transcript of the testimony, and do other necessary acts to conduct such an investigation. Thank you. Thank you. May I ask why you won't let the commissioners finalize their investigation first? Representative Babeline. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the budget squarely falls under the um, um, purview of the delegation, and given the fact that we haven't received an answer on this for at least several weeks. I think the taxpayers deserve where their money is being used and transferred to. And I think this is a nice vehicle that we would be able to help the commissioners along their investigation as well. I don't see a need to do two simultaneously. Madam Chair? We'll give you our information and you can go forward from there. Representative Burroughs. Representative Burroughs, did you have... You have to unmute. I um, also wonder. I also I wonder if it's appropriate if there is this committee being formed. I'm still bothered by the fact that the county, um, that the treasurer is not getting the information that he needs, and I was wondering if it would be appropriate for this committee to also look into that at the same time. That is an interesting. That is a good thought. Representative Avalani. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I would think that we should task this committee with a specific job, and then if they, we need to move into other um, areas, we would task another committee. Madam Chair, Commissioner Babson had a comment if you're, if you're taking a comment outside the delegation. Yeah. Commissioner Babson? You have to unmute yourself, Commissioner Babson. Commissioner Babson, unmute yourself so that... I am. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Representative Cuomo. I was unmuted. Could you ask Chairman Zebod to speak up or come to a point? I have no, I have no idea what she's asking or talking about. It's just gobble. Commissioner Babad, would you like to summarize your your comments? What loudly? Okay. I'll move closer. Um, my comment was I didn't know why the delegation wanted to form this investigative committee until the commissioners had finished their investigation. And uh, Representative Avellini said that uh, he felt he could be helpful to us, and I said, well, I didn't see any reason to have two at the same time, so we would give our information to their committee. Thank you. And Representative Burroughs suggested that there is another area of concern regarding the treasurer being unable to have access to the information that he needs to perform his duties, and suggested that he's Representative, uh, Representative Burroughs is coming in clearer than anybody on the uh, outside. So I heard her so request it, very clearly to and, Madam Kim. And you heard Representative Avalani's comment. Did you hear that? Yes. Okay. So everyone is clear. So I think where we stand at this point is we have been, it has been suggested that we, a motion has been made that we form a committee 
and to look at the situation of the, now I'm losing it totally, <laughs> that, we, that we look at the, the situation of the transfer of funds. So, and Representative Burroughs wanted to combine them, and Representative Avalani has suggested we keep them. Are there any other opinions on that issue, whether we combine them or do them separately before we go forward? I do, Madam Chair. Okay, Representative Cuomo. Thank you, Madam Chair. What I would do is I would do three separate motions. The, uh, the transfer, and there should be another motion for another investigative committee for the treasurer's um, uh, concerns. And I would also add the, um, the audit situation, since it's in the statute that we're supposed to do it, and it's not being done, and we are way past it. So that's three. That's just a suggestion. Three separate ones. Was that a motion? Uh, it was a suggestion that we have three different motions for three different committees. That was just a suggestion. Representative Butler. Thank you. There's a motion on the floor, um, and I would just ask that that be clarified um, so we know what transfer we're talking about, um, and uh, then I would call the question. And start there. I agree. I'm also looking at the thought that we are very rapidly coming to the end of term, and to, to take on some of these issues is, uh, could be problematic. So, uh, yes, Representative Avalani, would you like to? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, always, I always look forward to Representative Butler's opinion, and I think he's right. Um, if we're going to be specific about a, um, wh where we're going and what we're looking into, as I think that we should just have the committee look into transfers. I don't think outlining a specific transfer would be, it would only, it would limit the scope of that committee in case there was multiple issues that arose, we wouldn't be able to look at those if we were only um, just to look at one specific transfer. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Do we have a second to that one? Mm -hmm. yeah. Multiple. <laughs> Representative Marsh, I think, was the second. Okay. Do we have, is there any more discussion? Let's keep it right now to what we were talking about and a motion on the floor, which is, to look into the transfers to come up with a committee. So, is there any further discussion on that so that we can take a vote and clear? Call the roll. Okay, I'm not seeing any further discussion. We'll call the roll. Representative Tyshurst. Yes. Clerk of vote, yes. Representative Bucco. Yes. Representative Butler. Yes. Representative Cordelli. Yes. Representative Crawford. Yes. Representative Nelson? Yes. Representative Como? Yes. Representative Kennard? Yes. Representative Marsh? Yes. Representative Burroughs? Yes. Representative McDonald? Yes. Representative Woodcock? Yes. And the chair? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, the motion passes. You have the ability to assign. Yes, so I will assign. Okay. Without checking the people with their schedule but. Okay, we can have three to five members. I would suggest five. Yeah, and I think five makes sense. So we would put on that committee, let me take so I would volunteer, Madam Rep Chair. Yes, Representative Avalani. I know it's very interested in me. Representative Butler. Representative Guadelli. Representative uh, Wisconsin and myself. One more. Um, Representative Marsh. I'm willing. You need to have, you can assign five, but it should be um, the Democrat. I'm sorry. It's Without being partisan, the Democrats have the majority. It should be three uh, Democrats, two Republicans, unless the chair fits. I see no problem here. Agreed. Yes, I see no problem. Yeah. Um, okay. Madam Chair, would you like the list of? Yes, Madam Chair. Yes, Representative Ticehurst. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm, I'm not sure I was able to follow that. Um, 
properly, but did you assign five or six members? Five. Oh. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. Would you like to hear the members again? No, thank you. I got the five, but then I thought you added a six, and I was uncertain about that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, point of order? Yes. Point of order? No. Yes, I mean, I also heard six, Chris, so could you just mm -hmm. please repeat the five names? Yes. Would you, the clerk will repeat them. Representative Butler, Representative Cordelli, Representative Avalani, Representative Woodcock, and Representative Marsh. So the other question um, was to look into the suggestion was that we look into this situation to a study committee on the ability of the treasurer to receive the information and access that he requires to complete his work. Um, that was a recommendation by Representative Burroughs. Um, did you wish to make a motion on that, Representative Burroughs? Sure. Um, I would like to do that. Um, I would like to make a motion that a committee be formed to investigate why the county treasurer is unable to get information that he needs uh, to do his job for which he was elected. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Okay, the motion has been made, seconded by Representative Como. Is there further discussion? Representative, yeah, sorry. Mr. Costello. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I do have a statement that I would like to read in the record, uh, just as soon as I can get a copy of it in front of me. Be just a moment. And I think now would be a good time to present it before you vote on this motion. If you'll allow me just a moment. Sure. Point of order, Madam Kim? Yes. Is uh, Treasurer Costello, Costello come someplace where we could hear him? He has moved closer. He, he has a statement he would like to read. Is it the same one that he read at the commissioner's meeting a couple of weeks ago? Yes, sir. Okay, well then I'm all set. Thank you. Okay, thank you. This was county report to the commissioners as of August 26, 2020. Once again, I sit here in front of the commissioners with basically no financial information to report. Perhaps one may think the treasurer would request current financial information from the fiscal office. However, I would like to remind the commissioners that only within the past few weeks have I had the ability to enter the financial office without trying to go through a couple of locked doors. Notwithstanding that issue, I do feel like I'm treated like a minor child as an elected official. The comments out of the office are unnecessary and the office could use some appropriate behavior protocol training. I believe this is a subject the commissioners have received complaints on previously. To the main issue at hand, as you know, there have been many audits dating back to 2014, up to and including the report by Scott Egan, and most recently from the county's current auditor, about items that need to be completed by the fiscal office. If needed, I can outline these specifically. It has been a long time issue to get these things completed in a reasonable amount of time, yet there is no specific plan to change the county's method of operations to improve this situation. This deeply disturbing to me as an elected county official. I have discussed this matter with a number of people in the county and have had several conversations with some of the major people at DRA. I am sure the commissioners are all aware of these matters. I am told by a number of local and state officials that the responsibility rests with the commissioners. I have tried a number of times to help with correcting these issues, there was a person at a recent commissioner's meeting who was willing and able to step in and assist the financial department, yet they were dismissed. I do hope the commissioners realize this was a fantastic opportunity to get the fiscal department headed in the right direction. 
I do understand that a CFO may be in the works and is expected that this new position will get the financial department issues resolved. I do hope that is the case, given the past experience of bringing someone into fiscal office has, not, has been less than fruitful. In the meantime, as your elected official, I am not able to provide any information with regards <coughs> excuse me, to any fiscal matters of the county. It is difficult signing checks each week without knowing exactly the financial condition of the county. Please understand, I do believe the county is in a good financial position, and I do not want to send a message that is otherwise. My message is that the county can no longer operate under these same procedures. This is what I've been trying to get across for the past two years. It, has been, it is long past time that the commissioners take decisive action instead of being held hostage. I do fail to understand the appearance of non-action by the commissioner's office on this major issue plaguing the county. And while it is my final plea by way of having no financial information to report on, it is up to the commissioners to rectify the problem. Once these issues are dealt with by the commissioners and I have received a written response to this memo, I will expect going forward a weekly report out of the fiscal office detailing the revenue spent to date versus budget along with expenses to date versus budget, any uses of our TAN tax anticipation though, and why, along with balances. At the same time, the balances as of the date in the county's deposit accounts, including sweeps and repurchase accounts. Finally, a recap of all accounts in the fiscal office being balanced on a monthly basis. With all due respect, Joe Costello, County Treasurer. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Then we will call the roll. Oh, Madam Chair, Madam yes. Chair, please, my hand was raised. Oh, sorry. I really need someone over there watching. Am I recognized? Sure. Yes, you are. Representative Tyser. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I acknowledge the seriousness of this situation and the need to get to the bottom of this. I just want to think a little bit about um, the timing and the process. So it, earlier it was mentioned that we might potentially have three investigative committees, and it was also mentioned that there was, uh, might potentially be three separate um, rosters of membership for those committees. So if that was to happen, then we would have uh, potentially 15 individuals going into the finance office to con uh, investigate three separate matters at a time when we also have a new chief financial officer starting and when we're also beginning the budget process for the year on the commissioner's level. So I would, I am cautious myself about introducing more chaos into the system. And, uh, I hope we'll proceed here. Thank you. Representative Knurk. Yes, I actually agree very much with what Representative Kaiser just said. I think that the issue about looking at that at the transfer, uh, because that impacts what's going on with the budget right now, needs to be done this year. I think some of these other things could be looked at into the next year. There's also going to be a lot of overlap between what's done. I actually initially did not favor three separate committees because I do believe that they'll be looking at many of the same issues, speaking to the same people, and it would have been more efficient to have them do all three of these topics. If not, I would suggest waiting until the beginning of the next uh, year to then look at the other two questions, because they are long-term questions. Uh, the Treasurer has been asking for this access for a very long time. And uh, that, access, that access, though, would be good, isn't critical right now in terms of us cleaning up our budget and formulating our next budget. Thank you. Is there any other? Representative Burroughs. Yes, thank you. I'm just wondering if it would be appropriate um, uh, in the situation regarding the Treasurer for the um, assistant, um, um, either the Secretary of State's office or the Assistant Attorney General would be involved in that, rather than a uh, committee. I don't know if I personally think that um, it would be necessary to bring them in, and I don't think this would necessarily be a long-term, long-time committee. That
that we have to meet very often. I think the issues are, are pretty clear, and I think that um, that we should get a deeper understanding of them. Um, Representative John McDonald. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I see this as a management issue. The commission should be able to tell an employee to provide those reports to another department. It's, to me, it's a simple, simple thing. We have an elected treasurer with a, with a job that is defined in statute, and it's not happening. It's, I don't understand it. Representative Como. Thank you, Madam Chair. The other issue is the transfer, the treasurer, and the audit. All of this is in statute. Now, I'm just going to go off on a tangent here for a second. If the entire delegation wanted to bring in the AG's office, how would that actually happen? Would we all like just make a phone call, or do we have to write a letter? And would that be better to do that? Because I don't know, I, I don't know how this can continue. These are, these are three major things, and two of them cannot wait till next year. So I don't know what everybody thinks about that. Representative Avalon. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I think um, on those two points that Representative Como brings up, the use, typically the chairman of the delegation would request um, uh, an attendance of the people that uh, were just identified, whether it be the Attorney General's office, Secretary of State's office, DRA, or anybody else would be come to the specifically come to the delegation to answer questions. Um, however. The investigative committee would be able to bring back a finding to the delegation which would help the chairman uh, decide which direction to go. Uh, if it can be, if the, you know, our transfers lead into another area, it would definitely you know, be another conversation. Um, if the Treasurer committee turns into something where it's just a management issue. I think that could be handled pretty quickly. Um, and the third was, what was that? Audit. And yeah. the audit again um, would, you know, lend to the delegation and the, and the chairwoman um, a direction in which way to go. Um, granted that these were completed by, you know, in a timely manner. Representative Como. Thank you, Madam Chair. Then that would lead me to believe that the first motion should should be amended, if that's possible to do that, uh, to amend it to have the same committee just look at those three major issues. I don't know why the same committee couldn't just do three. I know we wanted to keep it narrow focus, but if there's three major issues, the one committee should be able to do that. And then issue you a report. And if you feel at the end, and if we feel at the end after reading that report that we need to go to the AGs or the FBI or whoever has to get in here and do it, then maybe we could do it that way. Representative Kerr. Uh, thank you. I agree completely with what Representative Como just said, and then I wish I had spoken up earlier when we were trying to formulate how to do this, because I do believe this should be one committee, three charges, and if the person who made the previous motion in the second or wish to amend it, or, or if we have to re-vote, I'm not sure what we do, but I would favor that. Thank you. Are there any representative uh, boroughs? You have to unmute yourself, Representative Burroughs. Sorry, um, I, I would I'd be happy to withdraw my motion um, so that we could uh, bundle those three issues into one committee. Representative Butler. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, although I think it might be more efficient for each, each issue to be dealt with separately, um, I'm at the will of the committee relative to how, if we were seen with one committee. However, I have... I am confused and uh, don't understand how uh, studying or making a recommendation relative to the timing of the audit is going to have any real impact. The audit is what it is. We have a requirement to get it done by a certain time and that has not happened. Hopefully with the CFO, 
and hopefully with a delegation um, that is focused on the issue, we will be able to pay better attention to that, or the delegation will be able to pay better attention to that in the future. But I don't see how studying or pursuing trying to get the audit done um, differently is going to have any impact at this point. Thank you. Representative Cuomo. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I only disagree because they're all connected. Each of those items are connected by one thread, and I believe that it, it's not going um, to be difficult to separate, separate them out. So I believe they're all connected. I mean, there's issues that the, the treasurer needs that has to do with the audit. So it's not really about audit timeline only. It's about the figures that we're supposed to have so we can make decisions. So it's connected to that, in my opinion. I think that a lot of the things that we are dealing with all zero down to the staffing in the administrative office. And I think that we are dealing with it. So I, I don't know, you know how much of it is going to still be there. Representative Adelante. Thank you, Madam Chair. And, I, and I've enjoyed the um, viewpoints of all our uh, members, however, to shed some light on um, the particular function of the committee we just passed. One, um, to be able to look into transfers is a direct correlation to our duties relating to the budget and how the budget is interpreted and used. The other two that we have been discussing clearly are management style issues. They fall under the purview of the commissioners. And while I am more than happy to um, look into those things, I think clearly those two are management issues that need to be addressed by the commissioners. The timing of the audit fall clearly with the commissioners. The access to financial information, a lack of financial information, falls under the commissioners when it relates to the treasurer. I think that having our, if you wish to combine another committee to look at those two separate issues, um, I would be in favor for. However, the transfer issue and the budget issue that we're going to be looking at is clearly within the purview of the delegation and I think should not be co-mingled with a management style investigation. Representative Butler. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would make a motion to support what Representative Avalani has said. We've already passed the uh, uh, investigation committee on the transfers, and I would move that we uh, put the issue of uh, access for information for the treasurer and the issue uh, of the audit uh, into another investigative committee. Is there a second? second. Okay, there's a second. Second. Ooh, second. Oh, Representative Woodcock has seconded it. Madam Chair, before we go too far, could we have the second and the first in, in the original motion or just add um, to look into the audit as well to the main motion so we're not having too many motions so it's a clear vote? I did intend to include that. Thank you. <coughs> Representative Cole, would you remove your second? Oh, yes. Sorry, Madam Chair. That's okay. Yes, I'll remove my second. Thank you. Would you mind? No? With the indulgence of the chair? With the indulgence of the chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Representative Burroughs, would you like to uh, change your motion to include looking into the, uh, the reason the audit is not done as well into this committee? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I, was, I'm ha I thought I had withdrawn that first motion. Yes, I'm happy to do that. Yes. Thank you. Can I have a second to that new motion? Rep Representative Woodcock did move it. Yeah, Representative Woodcock. Second. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. It's just for clarity. Thank you. We need clarity. <laughs> Going in three directions. Okay. Uh, is there any other further discussion? Then would you please read the motion and we will vote. Motion is to create an investigation. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Sure, oh, sir, Representative Ticehurst. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just questioning, I, I don't know if I've gotten this straight, if this is an investigate, investigate, a committee of investigation. Um, if it is, I'd like to rethink that um, because there are um, lots of uh, um, entanglements with that. And I think I'm hearing that the intent is to study 
um, this matter. So I, I wonder if it should be a study committee instead of a committee of investigation. My concern is we have an election coming up and there will be changes in some of these positions. Can we get this done before the post people uh, leave the position they're currently in? For example, um, my understanding is Representative Butler is not running for re-election. Um, can we get it done by the time the new people take over? I would hope we would do it very quickly. Representative Butler. I was thinking about that as well, Representative Nelson, and we are going to have to uh, have reports from these committees by December 8th, and if the work needs to happen beyond December 8th, then um, that recommendation will need to happen from those committees. So it could continue um, but with a new delegation. Thank you. Are there any further questions? Yes, I have a question. Oh, sorry. Didn't see your hand. Were we in voting mode or can I, can I speak? Yep. We're, we have a first and a second. We're in discussion. We're in discussion. Okay. Sorry. Uh, I'm just looking at uh, RSA 2418, expense of investigations. The county convention shall appropriate a certain sum of expenses for any committee established pursuant to RSA 2417, which I believe that's what we're doing, correct? Mm -hmm. okay. The reasonable expenses of such an investigation shall be paid by the county when approved by a judge of the Superior Court. So there is an extra step in here I just wanted everybody to understand. Representative Butler. Madam Chair, I would hope that, hope that neither investigation will require uh, a budget, and I don't believe that we need to request a budget unless it is needed. Um, so I would expect moving forward um, uh, without uh, budget associated with either committee. And relative to Representative Tyser's concern about study versus investigation, um, my motion was for an investigation. I think we can accomplish uh, the same um, it, with uh, that motion. Um, so I would just proceed with that motion and see where we go. Any further questions? Representative I just wanted to add RSA 2419 recommendations of the investigative committee. Just for the record, the recommendations of this committee, when accepted by the county convention, shall be entered at length, Commissioner Rafson, at length, to the next county report. So that report that would that would you know, uh, be compiled would have to be put in the annual report. And it does seem like there's anything else there. For that. Thank you. No, yes, Representative Babylon. Thank you. I think that the um, if this led into uh, an employee related, if any of these led into an employee related issue, I think those would need to be redacted from the um, report as well. I agree. Yes, Commissioner McCarthy. Um, I'm probably speaking out of turn, but I don't see the need for an investigation for the other two points. We all know where that's going to lead, and I think it's taking your time. We have hired a CFO. He's under the direction to reorganize the finance department, give us a report on who is able to do what, if jobs need to be changed or cross-trained or eliminated. And he, as far as I know, he'll be starting on the 21st, which is next Monday. I don't expect that he's going to do that in 30 days, but I don't see the need of having an investigation for um, the treasurer and the other one he wanted to do. But that's up to you. I, I find that would be a waste of time. Did everyone hear that? No. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was a lovely speech. You need to be <laughs> <from my phone. laughs> Would you like to come, yeah. come closer? Yeah. I know with masks it doesn't help, but, but please come closer because I think what you said was important to consider. I said that I thought that the other two investigations that you wanted to have take place would be a waste of time. We have hired a CFO. Um, he's due to start on the 21st with the direction of reorganization, 
and letting us know who is able to do what, cross-train or eliminate. And so I don't see why you would want to do that, but that's solely up to the delegation. Representative Marsh. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I want to thank uh, uh, Commissioner McCarthy for her comments. Uh, I agree with her that the commissioners appear to have identified the root cause of the lack of reporting from uh, the finance office, which has caused the delay in the audit and uh, uh, which has uh, uh, caused the treasurer not to be able to get the reports he needs to monitor the county finance. So I, I, I personally believe that this is an administrative function that the county commissioners as the administrators have taken effective action to address it. And I don't personally think that we need to be investigating this further at this time. And so therefore I will be voting against the vending motion. Okay. Representative Cox. Uh, all Thank you, Madam Chair. I would think then if the committee gets together and makes the report, the report of those other items would be very brief. It should not hamper or, or hinder anybody to just look into those other two very important specific items. I don't see why that would be a big expense or a time delay to do that, in my opinion. Thank you. Representative Cordelli. Thank you. Um, I think that um, we have made it clear that we are concerned about treasurer access to information. Um, he has certainly made it clear. Um, the auditors are coming in again on the 24th and 25th, I believe it is. Um, I am concerned about their lack of detail in the current email we got as to what's uh, going on with the audit and the uh, any updated list of uh, information and outstanding information. Um, I, I could see um, uh, postponing the beginning of uh, this committee's work until we get a report from the commissioners in detail about the status, or, or maybe from the auditors themselves, as to the status of the audit and uh, anticipated completion, uh, plus uh, see movement from the uh, county administration in terms of access for the uh, for the treasurer. Um, so I'm I'm, uh, I'm looking at uh, maybe a, a joint meeting um, the beginning of October with the commissioners. It could be via Zoom um, at the commissioners meeting uh, for those two areas to be discussed and updated to the delegation. Uh, before starting a committee of investigation on those two items. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think in light of everybody's comments, um, I would move to table the motion. I'd like to table the motion. No discussion with a tabling motion. So we will um, we have to a roll call. This is the second. Representative Tyshar. Yes. Clerk of vote, yes. Representative Fuko. Yes. Representative Butler. Yes. Representative Cordelli. Yes. Representative Crawford? Yes. Representative Nelson? Yes. Representative Cuomo? Yes. Representative Card? Yes. Representative Marsh? Yes. Representative Burroughs? Yes. Representative McDonald? Yes. Representative Woodcock? Yes. And the chair? Yes. Motion passes 14 to 0. Can I comment, Madam Chair, if you would? Certainly. I think that um, what has gone on here today has been a clear message to the commission is everyone happy with what is currently going on. Um, don't think this table motion will not be taken off the table if um, we don't see some progress. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, 
respond to that. Yes. The progress has been tremendous. It has been going on for several months now. The one issue that was taking longer than you thought, I agree with. But the other progress has been made. The progress with the treasurer asking him anything that he has put in writing to the finance office, he has gotten comments back from the com from in writing. I have asked to have copies of the anything that was sent down there in writing. <coughs> anything that was sent to me in writing has been responded to. We have, in the process, I think it's a process, or have we actually hired a new um, auditing firm? This has been going on. The delegation hasn't been happy with the auditing firm. We have had for three years now. And we have, last year we tried to find a new auditing firm, and we ended up with the same one. This year we have, I believe, found another one. So the progress has been consistent. It has not reached perfection yet, but it is progress. So I take that very seriously. But the comment about the money moving from one line to another, yes, I believe that's very serious, and that is what we are addressing. Um, thank you. Um, uh, thank you, Commissioner, for your comments and, and your opinion. Um, uh, I, I would, I would uh, maybe put it this way. Um, I would like to maybe a resolution from the um, delegation uh, concerning. Um, a report back to the delegation by the commissioners uh, regarding um, the status of the audit and the um, requested access uh, by the elected uh, treasurer um, and leave it as, as a resolution um, since we have a tailored motion for a committee of investigation. Representative Cuomo. Thank you, Madam Chair. If if we do form a, um, a resolution, it should have a date certain on it, a date that we get the report, uh, report back, not just leaving, leaving it open-ended. Representative Avalon. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think it is within the chair of the delegation uh, chairman, chairwoman's purview to I conclude those things on an agenda item and ask for the commissioners to provide a report as well. I would be happy to put it on the next agenda. Any further comments? Suggestions? Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want a clarification. Does that mean we're going to wait for our next delegation meeting? What date is that in order to get the the answer to those questions? Was that what well, I'm hearing? I am, I am thinking that uh, probably I would say early October because we hopefully will have the September report. By then we should know. We should to get to three quarters of the year, we shouldn't have to wait until December. Um, excuse me, end of the end of September. So is is the third quarter, and hopefully, we will be able to get our financial report then. So our next meeting, I am assuming, will be probably early October. I mean, I know it's it's close, but we're just now getting we just now got June through June. But the other. We should be getting one at the end of September, for the end after September closes. So I'm assuming sometime in October that we will meet again, if not before. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think at our last meeting that the uh, finance um, director said the middle of October would be um, sufficient for the third quarter, uh, at least for well, that's what to at least for the third quarter numbers, and I think. Um, again, uh, having a meeting in the middle of October would allow the commissioners due time to go over the uh, um, whatever's left of the audit to do because they're going to be here on the 25th, 26th. I would give them at least one meeting to formulate a report to the delegation. And I 
I'm hoping that might move our report, our third quarter report, a lot quicker than we got this last one. So with that being extra work, extra people in the office, hopefully that will be accomplished. Thank you, Madam Chair. And as a follow-up to that, we would also have somebody, a chief financial officer, in place for at least two or three weeks that might be able to give us an overview report as well. I think middle of October. Is that reasonable for getting the treasury to getting our financial report for the first three quarters? If we did it mid-October? I believe so because they're going to push to get that done because our department heads have to be working on their budget and they have to have Thank you. Um, nine months of numbers to work with. Okay. Do you want to set the meeting? Go ahead. Yes. Do you want to set the meeting now to look at the calendar? I just put the calendar up there. I don't know if anybody yeah. can even see it. it but. Yeah. <laughs> 16th and 23rd are Friday. We all need to get our calendars on. We usually meet on Mondays or Fridays. Put the difference and then look at the ninth Monday the nineteenth. Monday the nineteenth. Does that work for people? Yep. Okay. Why don't we aim for Monday the nineteenth of October? Yes, Representative Avalon. Thank you, Madam Chair. Was that a matter that date also agreeable to the commissioners to? Get us the reports that were requested. I believe so, yes. Thank you. Okay, so we will aim for Monday, the 19th of October. Here. Would you please give us a list of the reports and what questions you would like to answer? Okay. Representative Avalani? Thank you, Madam Chair. I think um, the member should re refer those questions to the chairman and the chairman send it in one enclosure. So we should do the chairman of the commission is not getting multiple emails from members. I will do that. Thank you. And are we saying 10 a.m.? Yes, that's 10 a.m. <laughs> with a potential. Yes. And hopefully this will be working by then. So we will say 10 a.m. on uh, Monday, October 19th, and probably we'll be meeting for transfers before that. The executive committee, if you have transfers to do, then I'll let the executive committee know. Other business. Madam Chair, yes. Madam Chair, just for the the record, um, and to let you know that Representative Burroughs had to leave the meeting. Okay. Thank you. Were we done with the? Any other questions on the review on the expenditure sheet? I don't think we ever I think some people would like to we take a, a five minute break because I believe we also are going to go into executive session after. Non public. Non -public. Non -public. So we'll take a five minute break. Um, Madam Chair, yes. and when we come back, can we do other business? Yes. Thank you. Most definitely. We have yes. time for a quick either public comment or media questions? We will do, we will do public comment. Yes. But we're, right now we're taking a five minute break, then we will come back, we will do the uh, other business and then public comment. Okay. okay. The most important thing is the microphone. You can press star six to unmute. And we did find it. Um, you are unmuted. She went to get something in coffee. She went to get something coffee? Yeah. Okay. Um, the, next, the next item of business is other business. 
and we do have one piece of very important business to take care of today. Um, no. Always have. Um, would you like me to ask you to come back? Yes, yeah. please do. here from the Conway Sun. Um, so I, I'm sorry I walked into this movie late, but uh, I am completely confused by the transfer issue. I know that you guys are very concerned about a transfer that was made by somebody at some point and some amount of money. Could somebody uh, clarify how much money, when was it? Yes, I would Representative Cordelli give you that quick rundown. Uh, it, it, the budget that uh, the delegation approved in March uh, included money for a settlement of a legal case. Uh, there was, uh, following that, uh, there appeared to be a transfer of monies from administrative salaries to the settlement line. Um, and subsequently to that, there has been indication that the administrative salaries line uh, will be short funds by the end of the year. I believe that is one of the uh, primary transfers that the committee uh, will want to uh, look at. So we're talking about funds in excess of $100,000, and, and do you know when the, the, this transfer or transfers occurred? Uh, I think that the uh, committee will get those details. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is there any further public comment? Well, and then we're going to know about the CFO Wednesday, okay. is my understanding. Thank you. So, Representative McCarthy is back. Um, do we have Howie back? I believe that Melissa is uh, contacting him. Okay. Um, I think since the meeting is going on, I can start that um, that we, as a county delegation, are really appreciate the work that the commissioners and all the county employees have done through the COVID time. Um, we know it's been difficult, but you folks have been here every day, and we truly appreciate what all of the staff and everyone has done to keep the county operating during this really difficult time. And um, we also have special appreciation for um, that we are going to be giving to those who actually literally had to put their lives on the line. And we will wait for, uh, for Howie to get back online. And Representative Butler will be doing a presentation. And Ms. Siemens, will Howie be coming? The a uh, receptionist at the nursing home said that he was on a call, but she was going to interrupt and ask him to come back on. You can explain the logistics. So everyone on the commission knows, or on the delegation knows that uh, we are doing a banner uh, that will be hung uh, at the entrance um, to acknowledge uh, the work of the nursing home staff. Um, and hopefully Holly will be able to come back on and uh, 
we can show you an image of it. And in the meantime, um, I think most of you know that uh, I have a nursing home administrator's license, and uh, I was an assistant administrator in a nursing home in uh, New York City. And I'm also a nurse, and uh, over the course of my nursing career, um, I did uh, work with um, the frail elderly in a variety of settings and in the nursing home that I was an administrator in I also worked as a nursing home supervisor or whatever was needed in the nursing uh, area. Um, so I am very aware of um, the work that our nursing home staff at Mountain View Community are doing and it is it is amazing work. You get to um, love those people that you are caring for. Um, even though they are frail, even though they may be uh, unaware of, of their surroundings in the way that uh, you are, uh, even though they may be combative, even though they may be uh, difficult uh, in their daily care, um, Taking care of those people is really um, a wonderful uh, calling. And uh, now we have COVID. Um, how do you add that to the challenges already uh, that our staff are facing? Um, it is amazing to me that our staff has done as well as they have. And in those communications that we get from Howie, are you there, Howie? I am here. Yes. Hi. Good, good afternoon. I'm just talking about uh, the challenges that your staff face uh, every day, even before um, the COVID uh, challenge um, uh, came to Mountain View and every other long-term care facility in the state. Um, and... Uh, the daily communications that you are doing, the work that your administration and your staff are doing, um, is beyond the call. Um, it is so impressive. It is so impressive that uh, the delegation wanted to make a uh, uh, expression of our gratitude. And although I don't have the uh, actual banner, it will be here tomorrow afternoon, um, I do have it here. Uh, and, and this is what the banner will say. It will be a 12-foot banner to go, to the, uh, to go up in, uh, at the entrance of the nursing home, and it will be double-sided so that... Uh, everyone will understand that we really appreciate and try to understand the challenges that you have faced and the incredible job that you have done. So, thank you very much from the delegation. Madam Chair, can, can uh, Representative Butler just read that out loud? I can. It will say, thank you for putting yourselves on the line, carrying out your duties for our Mount Mountain View community residents. And we are especially thankful during this difficult time for your dedication and selfless service to those in need. Thank you, Holly. Thank well, you to your thank staff. You, you know, it, it isn't often that I can talk to speak on behalf of all the staff, but I know that each and every one, as they come into the building and as they leave at the end of this shift, I'm going to especially appreciate it because you guys didn't have to do this. And, and 
and, and knowing that you didn't have to, but you saw the need and wanted to and did do it anyways, is going to make a world of difference. Because, you know, staff are, are I guess we, we call it over here, suffering a little bit from, you know, COVID fatigue. It's been, it's been since March 13th, since the building's been closed, and it's been really hard on them, it's been hard on the residents. But seeing this every time they come and every time they leave, it is it's going to brighten a lot of spirits. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. And there's no further business to come to for the meeting. We need to be adjourned. Oh, well, but I thought that was a separate meeting. Okay. We will go into non-public now. Uh, under... Oh, take my leave. 93A3. Thank you. Hi, Howie. Thank you. All people who are not members of the delegation. Thank you. Would you like the commissioners to stay? So. Who's begging to stay, Madam Chairman? The commissioners may stay, yes. The commissioners and the delegation. and create another Zoom because you have public out here. I can for those people. You can. I can. Representative Barrows, I think it's still there. She just might have stepped away from you. Representative Barrows, are you there? That's no. a nice power, isn't it? Uh, no, Representative Barrows had to leave. She had to leave. So she said she had to go to another meeting, Madam Chair. Okay. So I removed her just to make sure no one else is listening on her open yeah. line and that she must yes. have left it open. Yes. That's our conference phone. Yeah. The bottom here. Um, Madam Chair, did you want me to stay? Um, yes. For the yes. notes? Okay. Yes. I think it is. So, just we're out of what? I just want to make sure they all know we're out of non public. They don't continue okay. to. We are out of non public. So, yes. Representative Tyson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm a little rusty on this, but I believe that what we need to do now is to vote to seal the minutes of the non-public session. Okay. Would you like to make that motion? I do make that motion, and I move to seal them for six months. And Madam Chair, this May I just ask for guidance? I know that Representative Camo is more of an expert in this than I am, but I believe that we need to um, heal them for a date certain and then review them at that time. I don't want to give you the wrong answer. Okay. Representative Avalani, uh, we 
need a second. Okay, we need a second for that motion. I need a second. So moved. Okay, and it's seconded by Representative Butler. Right. Yes. Sorry, Madam Chair, I would instead of uh, six months, I, I would say to uh, keep them sealed until we unseal. I don't think it has to be a date certain. I think it was a legal thing, and it would be when it's uh, adjudicated. But I think they should remain sealed until we agree to unseal them. That so, Madam Chair, given the uncertainty, I will withdraw my motion and reframe it as. Representative Camille suggests. Okay, so I believe that is that we make the motion that, that we will unseal them at a time that we determine. And I will second that again and, and still ask a question for discussion. Okay. Um, if we if we move to unseal at some point in the future, how is that followed and at what point does a future uh, chair determine that we might want to unseal them? How does that get followed? Madam Chair, may I? Yes. So again, I confess to being slightly rusty on this, but my recollection is that the body is responsible for keeping records of when uh, minutes are, draft minutes are, maybe not draft minutes, but when minutes are accepted. And also, they are responsible for reviewing from time to time uh, their minutes to see which minutes that have been sealed no longer um, apply under the conditions, uh, my grammar is terrible, uh, under the conditions under which they um, can remain sealed. So it is a responsibility, and it's something that's not practiced widely. It is practiced by people who've been caught and um, prosecuted for not renewing those sealed records to see if they should be opened or if they should remain sealed. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, one second. I just need some more. I don't want to stop. I apologize. I had to get a drink of water because I had a wicked tickle and I didn't want it to make me cough, cough, cough. <clears throat> During COVID time, my mask. Commissioner okay. McCarthy had a question. There is a question. Commissioner McCarthy, please. And I'm not sh positive on the settlement. So I believe what we're questioning is <coughs> that in the future that some future delegation may wish to unseal the unseal the minutes. So well, Madam Chair, if I yes. yes, Representative Tysers. I'm sorry for the delay. Look at that. I have further information. Um, let me just look up here. This is a non-public meeting procedure checklist. And sorry, I don't have the source right at the moment. It goes through the whole nine yards. And then it says roll call vote to seal minutes with the name. I'm sorry, I have to go up further. Um, public session re reconvened at fill in the blank. Motion made to seal these minutes. If so, motion made by, second and by, comma, because it is determined that divulgence of this information likely would affect adversely the reputation of any person other than a member of the board, or render a proposed action ineffective, or prepare, pertains to preparation or carrying out of act, actions regarding ter terrorism, then there's a roll call vote. Um, just a second. Uh, before that, it says um, 
under RSA 91A33, minutes of proceedings in non-public session shall be kept and the record of all actions shall promptly be made available for public inspection except as provided in this section. Minutes and decisions reached in non-public session shall be publicly disclosed within 72 hours of the meeting unless, by recorded vote of two-thirds of the members present, it is determined that divulgence of the information likely would adversely affect the reputations of any person other than the board, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And in the event of such circumstances, information may be withheld until, in the opinion of a majority of members, the aforesaid circumstances no longer apply. And actually, Madam Chair, I think that answered my question. I don't think that we have to set a date certain. So I apologize for the runaround here. I think I learned something. Okay. I think we're on A32, which is more to be more of a litigation issue. Yes. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.